What's up YouTubers and plant lovers, it's Justin, and today I'm going to be battling scale. Now as you can see, things are a little different up here. I don't have a plant, instead I have a bottle of neem oil right here. And uh, I do have a problem with uh, some citrus scale. And on a personal note, uh, do not look up the citrus scale. Look up citrus scale if you're having a problem with citrus scale. The citrus scale is something totally different. Before I start, I didn't want to bring a plant in that was infested with scale. Uh, I worry about my other plants too. Now, uh, with scale, it is a little bit different. It's one of the harder pests to actually deal with. Uh, and that is because there are really two types of scale when you're talking about citrus scale. You have the armored scale and you have the uh, soft scale. Uh, the armored scale, as the name implies, has a, a kind of hard uh, outer shell that protects the insect underneath. Uh, and then the uh, soft scale is not fully without protection. It does have a waxy kind of coat over top that does protect it uh, from certain ailments or any other kind of problems that the scale might face in the natural world. Uh, typically what happens with scale is they have kind of a little proboscis or a little uh, needle-like thing that they can, uh, mouth part that they can insert into the tree. Uh, and then they'll siphon off nutrients from the tree until the tree looks dilapidated, distorted, uh, and kind of stunted. So if you do notice that your tree is looking uh, like the leaves are dropping dra dramatically, uh, twigs and uh, branches are breaking off, uh, the citrus or the fruits look kind of uh, stunted or distorted, you probably do have scale. And you can tell just by kind of going in and looking over it, and you'll see a uh, little kind of bumps over the plant uh, and in a minute I'll go outside and show you what I'm dealing with and show you what the scale actually looks like. Uh, the tree is actually kind of infested pretty bad. Uh, what you can do is to kind of prevent that is actually make sure you buy from a reputable dealer and even if you do that uh, things happen in nature and shit happens. So you just got to be careful, uh, be patient and uh, kind of pay attention to your plants before they get too bad. Now, as I was saying, with a uh, scale, what happens is uh, the female scale usually is the problem. A female scale doesn't have any wings and often doesn't have any legs either. Uh, the male scale is probably at the, about the size of a gnat and pretty hard to observe or see. Um, and they do fly around. They do have one pair of wings and notable leg development. Uh, so they can actually move around and kind of reproduce uh, while the female usually doesn't move at all And if she does it's not for very long until she finds a place to settle down And then she inserts her kind of probe into the tree and drains the tree of its valuable resources and nutrients that it needs in order to survive um, Other than that uh, There's really not much you can do about it. There is a really kind of organic way uh, you can get like a large butterfly butterfly cage it's kind of like a pop-up hamper uh, and you zip it up and you can uh, put ladybugs in there uh, and ladybugs can kind of help fight back and parasitic wasps can also kind of help back with scale too now with scale especially soft scale they can produce what's called honeydew um, and that's just kind of a byproduct that it produces and it does attract ants uh, so with kind of a double-edged sword, you'll have scale in one hand and then ants that are attracted to the honeydew uh, Will kind of come in there and kind of wreak havoc on the plant as well Now the honeydew will also kind of produce or attract a sooty mold fungus uh, And if it's left unchecked that stuff will cover the tree and prevent photosynthesis uh, So I don't have any of the ladybugs right now uh, but you can get them off eBay or Amazon, and I think you can get like $1,500 for around $19 or $20. And then your butterfly cage is around $15 to like $30, depending on what size you want to get. Now, I do have this neem oil right here. This is also kind of an uh, organic way. It is for an organic. Uh, it is produced by the neem tree, uh, and it is a byproduct of that. Um, but... This stuff can kill bees, so you got to be very careful when you're using this because you can kill the potentially good insects with the bad. Um, and as you know, with the problem with the bees right now, you don't want to take that uh, into a, you you want to take that into account and not kill the good insects also. 
Uh, and it also says on here that if your plant is very stressed out, you can actually burn your leaves up and kill your plants too. So what I'm going to be doing is mainly just trying to cover the scale uh, with this neem oil and trying to remove it uh, with my thumbnail or uh, a razor blade. But you got to be careful with a razor blade too because if you cut too deep, you end up cutting into the plant and I end up hurting the plant and uh, creating an opening where disease and pest and rot and anything else can actually get into the plant. So you got to be very careful whenever you're dealing with scale. It is one of the harder pests to fight back on. As always, make sure you sanitize your pruning shears and any other tools you may be using for this project. Now, I decided to prune back avidly uh, because the plant is pretty well infested. You can apply the neem oil with a q-tip, but use it sparingly. That stuff uh, a little bit goes a long way, and it does smell. Be sure to cover any areas on stems or petioles that you may see with scale, and get the tops and bottoms of leaves as well. You'll want to use uh, citrus grade potting soil, something that's porous and can let water drain freely. Using a root rake, you can loosen the root ball a lot quicker without actually hurting a majority of the roots. Be very thorough with the root ball. Uh, scale can live on roots and in and around the soil. Be sure and trim back roots that are longer than about an inch or two. As you begin to add in new soil, be sure and tamp it down around the root ball to help alleviate any air bubbles. At this point, the only thing left to do would be to water the plant. You can even add 100% cinnamon over the cuts to prevent disease and infestation from entering the plant. Alright, now just with gardening in general, any kind of problem with pests, be it scale, spider mites, or what have you, it's going to be a constant battle. It's not going to be done in just one day. Hopefully the majority of it will all have been taken care of. But even still, if it's all gone, you still have to keep a constant eye on that and make sure that you don't see any other problems. Just because one goes away doesn't mean that another one might not be around the corner. So uh, be patient, be kind, and don't throw your plants out just because they may have a little infestation. Uh, for a majority of pests, you can just kind of spray it off with water. Uh, but the little harder ones like scale may take a little bit more work, avid pruning, uh, and some kind of chemical warfare. Predominantly neem oil does the trick, uh, and in its place rubbing alcohol can do a lot too. Uh, but you may have to actually enlist some help of some stronger uh, chemicals. Uh, but if you do, uh, be responsible. Use it uh, kind of conservatively. Don't go overboard because a lot of that stuff out there will not only kill good pests, but they'll also kill the bad pests too, vice versa. 
Um, so you want to make sure that you're not going to take uh, the good out with the bad. Uh, so be very mindful of that. Take your time and remember it's a constant battle to fight it all off. Uh, and that's the way it always is and probably always will be. Uh, it's Mother Nature doing its thing and we have to deal with it. Until next time guys, uh, let me uh, know if you've ever had any kind of problems with scale or any other kind of pests that may uh, plague your plants. Uh, and while you're at it, hit the subscribe button or the bell next to it. That way you'll know any time I've uploaded a new video. You all take it easy, have a good one, and don't forget, always plant prudently. Thank you, YouTube. Real quick, I wanted to thank my Patreon subscribers. Pam donated again this month. If you're interested in supporting my channel through Patreon, please check the link in the description box below.